Hello and uh, welcome to My Finance Teacher. Last week, if you remember, we talked about bond valuation. And as part of uh, that video, what we've also had a look at is the relationship between interest rates and bond prices, which of course is always negative. And we've noticed that this negative relationship is stronger for longer term bonds. Today, I'm going to pick up from that subtopic as it relates to uh, one of today's topics, which is interest rate risk. This negative relationship between prices and interest rates, there are actually uh, two kinds of interest rate risks. Interest rate risk is split into the price risk and the reinvestment risk. The price risk is the part of the interest rate risk that is related to this subtopic that we discussed in the video from last week. So as you have already seen, price risk is the risk that uh, when you are holding bonds, when you are a bondholder, if interest rates change, especially if interest rates rise, then the price or the value of the bonds you are holding is going to drop. And that is actually not going to affect you very much if you hold the bonds until they mature without selling them, as the interest rate changes are not supposed to affect the face value you're going to receive when the bond matures. But in case if the bondholder, in case if you have to sell the bonds for whatever reason before they mature, then of course the price risk, that part of the interest rate risk that affects the prices of the bonds you are holding can damage you if the bond price drops due to higher interest rate and especially if it happens just before you plan to sell those bonds. As you have learned from these several examples in the previous video last week, you know that price risk, the changes in prices due to changes in interest rates, price risk affects longer term bonds stronger than it does shorter term bonds. In this previous example, we had two bonds, shorter term and a longer term bonds. And for both of those, all the conditions were the same with the change in interest rates from 5.8% to 8.8%. And of course, the decline in the longer term bond price was bigger than the decline in the short term bond price showing that, yes, price risk affects longer term bonds to a larger degree than it affects shorter term bonds. One more thing to mention about price risk is that price risk affects lower coupon bonds stronger than it affects higher coupon bonds. Let's have a look at an example. Let's say we have two bonds, both mature in five years, both face the market interest rate, the yield to maturity of 5%, uh, let's perhaps for a moment assume the face value of $1,000 and the coupon rate, the level of coupon of 10% for the first bond, that's a higher coupon bond, and for the second bond, we're going to assume a 4% coupon rate, $40 out of the face value of $1,000. First, let's calculate the prices, that equals PV, open the brackets, rate, number of periods, PMT and the face value. Let's give it a bit more space to see the price and copy this formula for the other bond and give it more space as well. Let me adjust the face value so the prices of the two bonds are more or less similar. After all, we are looking at price risk. So let's start with um, relatively similar prices. So let me adjust this to 1,300 as the face value. Then the prices of both bonds are somewhere around 1,200. Similar enough. Now let's change the interest rates and see how strong is the price risk for the bond with higher coupon versus the bond with a lower coupon. Let's change the interest rate to 10% for both bonds. And we see that the value of the higher coupon bond dropped by around $216, whereas the value of the lower coupon bond dropped by somewhere around $240. So the drop in price is greater for a lower coupon bond. Next, let's move on to that other part of the interest rate risk, which is the reinvestment risk. And reinvestment risk is the risk, is the uncertainty 
about the interest rates at which your cash flows can be reinvested. What do we mean here? Well, let's have a look at a timeline. Imagine you have found an interesting, attractive bond which pays a coupon payment of $100 or 10% of the face value, which is $1,000, and the bond lasts for four years, it matures in four years, and you were lucky enough to buy it for $1,000, meaning that the yield to maturity that you are earning is 10% per year. By the way, whenever the price, in this case negative $1,000, is equal to the face value, yield to maturity is always equal to the coupon rate. So I don't even need to make any calculations to know how much I'm earning in interest rates or in yield to maturity. Now that is a pretty good interest rate of 10% per year, especially in the current environment where time deposits in a bank would give you anywhere under 1% or so. Hence, whenever I receive these cash flows, the annual coupon payments, and the face value when the bond matures, I might be somewhat worried if I will be able to reinvest all of these future cash flows at a relatively attractive interest rate again. Will I be lucky enough to buy an attractive bond again? And that is basically the meaning of the reinvestment risk. And now imagine that instead of being lucky enough to buy an attractive four-year bond, which pays a very comfortable 10% yield to maturity per year, I only managed to buy a two-year bond. In this case, I will receive the face value and all of the coupon payments of the bond. I will receive all of the future cash flows promised by the bond sooner. I will receive them within two years rather than within four years. So I will only be able to earn that 10% yield to maturity over the next two years rather than over the next four years. Hence, of course, my concern for how will I be able to reinvest that future cash flow is a little bit greater with a shorter term bond. So the effect of reinvestment risk is greater for shorter term bonds rather than longer term bonds. And lastly, talking about the reinvestment risk, let's rearrange this future cash flow of $1,200 so that the face value is a little bit lower. Let's turn it down to $600 and bring the coupon payments up to $300 each, meaning that the total future cash flow is still $1,200 as in the original example. But on average, I'm getting this cash flow sooner. For example, after one year, I'm going to receive a coupon of $300 instead of a coupon payment of only $100. Hence, my worries, my concerns of being able to reinvest these future cash flows at an attractive interest rate are a little bit greater. So, reinvestment risk is greater for bonds with higher coupon payments. I hope this video is helpful. If it is, hit that like button. For any upcoming tests, share this video with your friends and good luck with your exams.